Hello everyone, I'm Zachary Powell, the Senior Android Developer Advocate at Vonage. And today we're going to be taking a look at how we can build an Android application that's able to make a voice call from one application to another application. We're going to be doing this using the Vonage client SDK and we're going to be writing this application in Kotlin. You can find the, the written version of this tutorial over at developer.vonage.com where you'll also find a link to a GitHub repository that has the sample application pre-built for you as well if you'd like to take a look at the complete code. But with all that said, let's get started with today's tutorial. So as with all tutorials really, there's a couple of things that we need to get set up first before we can really start writing our application. So of course, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make sure that you have a Vonage account set up. If you don't already, head over to developer.vonage.com and you can sign up for free in the top right hand corner. After this, we also need to make sure that we have Node.js installed. This is so that we can use the Vonage CLI to do some of the authentication work and other bits and pieces that a server would normally handle while we're building our sample application. We don't want to have to worry about that. So we can use the Vonage CLI, which requires Node.js. So make sure you get Node.js installed, however, whatever way you need to do that for your platform. Next, we can install the Vonage CLI and we can do that using this command here. And then we'll also need to just configure that with our API key and API secret that you can find on the Vonage dashboard for the account that you've signed up with. And then of course, finally, we're building an Android application. You're gonna need to have Android Studio installed, set up and configured ready to be used. So go ahead and make sure that you've got all those steps ready and then we can continue. But let's start by creating a local web server that we can use to have Vonage send us details about the calls that are being initiated in our application. So we can do this by creating a, a new fo local folder, and then we're going to create a new Node.js application. And then we have a couple of dependencies that we're going to want to use for this project. So let's go ahead and install Express and Local Tunnel uh, into our new Node.js application. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our server application file. So I'm just going to copy this from the written tutorial. You can find the code over there at developer.vonage.com. So the one thing we are going to need to change is we have this subdomain variable here. So let's set that to something personal uh, that wouldn't be being used by any other possible web server that's running locally. Okay, so the first endpoint we have is voice forward slash answer. And this is where Vonage is going to send details of who is trying to call who. So who is doing the call and who is receiving the call. The other endpoint that we have here is voice forward slash events. And that's basically just going to forward on any events that happen during the call process. And so we can output those here. And finally, we're going to create our local tunnel and web server running on port 3000. With that all set up, let's go ahead and start our local web server. Next up, we need to register our application with Vonage. We can do this using the Vonage CLI that we installed earlier. And we can use this apps create command. We're going to give it a, a name for this application. In this case, we'll just use app to app tutorial. And then we need to set a couple of URLs. So here we're going to set the voice answer URL, which will be our first endpoint that we created in our web server. And so this knows this is so Vonage knows where to send the event notification that someone has actually answered a phone call and who the call is between. The other one we need to set up is the voice event URL. And this is where we will set up to have Vonage send any event information to this URL so that we can see when any kind of event is happening. Once we've created the application, you'll see that you are given an application ID. This is very important. We'll need this shortly. And we also have a couple of key, an app file and a key file that's been created. We're also probably gonna need these in a minute as well. So next up, we need to go ahead and create 
our users of this application. Again, this of course is something that you could normally do via the server SDK, but here we're just going to use the Vonage CLI to generate these. We're going to create two users, one called Alice, uh, another called Bob, and as you can see, both have a user ID generated and given back to us. Okay, so next up we need to generate a JWT for each of our users so that we can authenticate with the Vonage system. Again, we can use the uh, server SDK to do this, but in this case, we're going to use the Vonage CLI. And all we need to do is use the JWT command. We need to pass in the app ID, which is the ID that was generated when we created our application with Vonage. And then we also need to pass in the subject, which in this case will be Alice for the first one. We then also need to pass in the key file, which was generated when we created our application. And we can see that that's here. And finally, we need to pass in um, the ACL. So basically the kind of permissions that this user has for this application. And this is some uh, JSON, which I'm just going to copy and paste in here. But again, you can find this in more detail in the written tutorial. And here you can see we have now the uh, JWT for the user Alice. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same command, but change the subject to Bob and get his JWT as well. OK, so now we can get started with our Android application. And here we just have a blank Android project using the default blank activity. Of course, if you've got your own application you want to implement this into, you can do that as well. But we're going to start by adding in the Maven repository that we need to access some of the uh, SDK's dependencies. So we'll sync that and then we will add the SDK into our build.gradle file. And finally, we're just going to pop into our gradle.properties file and we're going to enable Jetify. And that's all the configuration we need to do. Now we can get some code written. Next up, we need to set up the permissions for the application. As you can imagine, we're doing a voice call, so we're going to need some permissions. We're going to need internet access. We're going to want to understand the network state, the Wi-Fi state, and changing the Wi-Fi state. But then probably most importantly, we are going to need to be able to record audio. We need to be able to actually send the audio to make the call happen. So we need that permission, which is a protected permission. So the thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to request that permission at runtime. Obviously, in your application, you could probably come up with a more sophisticated way of doing this. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're literally just going to request that permission every time we run the application. And the user will be displayed with the uh, permission request if it's required and the permission hasn't been granted. OK, so next up, let's create a very basic UI for this application. I'm just going to take this straight from the written version of the tutorial, but it's basically just a, a linear layout with a number of basic UI elements. So we have a login Alice button, login Bob button, a text view, a start call, answer, reject, and end buttons. It's all we really need for the sake of this tutorial. So let's get those wired up in our activity. Uh, we'll obviously create variables for each of those elements and link them to the UI elements in our View. And then the last thing we just need to do as well is set up the on click listeners for the login as Alice and login as Bob buttons. And we will create two functions that will handle those processes. Okay, so that's all the boilerplate stuff kind of set up. So let's actually get into building our phone call. So, first off, the thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need a Nexmo client object. And this is the main client that will handle the whole call process. So we're going to initialize that. Um, and we're also going to create another variable that's just going to keep track of what the user that we're not logged in as is so that we know who we're actually calling. So let's then initialize that Nexmo client. And that's very simple. There's a builder helper class that will just do that for us. And all we have to do is pass in the context. Next, we need to create a connection listener on the client so we're just going to use the set connection listener and this is so that we can basically do some logic around whatever the current connection status is so here we're given the uh, the connection status and the first thing we'll do is we will update the connection status text view to display the current status just so the user knows what's going on and then we're going to check to see if the status is actually connected 
And if it is, that means we can just make some more UI changes to display the correct buttons and views that the user needs when they are connected. So as you can see, we have this hide UI function. So let's just write out that function. And all that's going to do is basically what it says on the tin. It's going to hide the UI elements that we don't need when we are connected. Okay, so let's now fill in the login as Alice and login as Bob functions. So what we're going to do is first set the value of the other user so that we know which user we'll be contacting. And then we just need to use the client.login method. And what we do here is we pass in the uh, JWT that we generated earlier for each of the users. So here we'll just pop Alice's in. And then we'll do the same process for Bob's as well, just setting the other user as Alice instead. Okay, so now we can start the process of receiving the phone call. So let's create a new variable. And this is to track the current ongoing phone call, if there is one. So this will be a, a Nextmo call object um, that is optional. And obviously we'll initialize that with null as when you launch the app, there is no call. We then need to set up a new add incoming call listener. And this is so we can present the correct UI if the user is receiving a phone call and we know what to do. So we'll obviously basically enable the answer call button and the reject call button and give the user those two options. Next, we're going to set up some more on click listeners for the three buttons, the answer call button, the reject call button and the end call button. And those will all have methods that will be called to handle that logic. OK, so let's go ahead and implement those methods. And we'll start with the answer call method where we'll basically on the ongoing call, we'll use the answer method and we'll pass in a Nextmo request listener so that we can see if the answer was successful. We have this on error method that we can override to handle any error cases that might happen. And then in the on success method, we're basically going to make sure that we add this call listener to the ongoing call. We'll see what we do with that in a moment. And then also update the UI just to show the end call button as we are now successfully in a call. Next up, we have the reject call method, which is pretty straightforward. Basically, on the ongoing call, if there is one, we're just going to hang up the call. So we can do that even if we haven't already answered the call, and that will reject the call. So again, we have the on error method to handle any error cases if the hang up fails. But we also then have the on success method. If it is successful, we're going to want to update the UI again to, to use the start call button and also show the waiting for incoming call text view. And then we have the end call function, which as I'm sure you can already guess is pretty much the same as the reject call. So on the ongoing call object, we're going to use the hang up method to end the call. Again, we have the on error method. If we want to handle any errors what, that happen during that hang up process. And then we also have the on success method where we will update the UI to display the start call button and the waiting for incoming call text view. We'll also at the end want to just set the ongoing call back to null as there is now no ongoing call. With all that in place, we can now look at actually making a phone call from the app. So here we're going to create a call listener object, which is what we just previously used. And that's an Exmo call event listener. We're then going to initialize that call listener. And essentially there's a number of different methods we need to override here, but only one of them we're actually interested in. And that's the on member status update. So for this met method, we're going to check to see what the current status is. Is it, is the call completed? Is the call canceled? And if that's the case, we're going to remove the current ongoing call and then update the UI. And so this is basically, so we know when a call gets canceled by the other user, we know it's time to end the call on our side as well. We have these other functions on mute change, on earmuff changed and on DTMF, but we're not using those. So we just need to override those and leave those blank. And with that done, we have just one last thing to do. And that is to set the on click listener for the start call button. And for this, we use the start call method. So within this method, we're going to just use the client server call method. 
and that passes in a user. So in this case is the other user, the person we want to actually call. And then also the Nexmo request listener. And this request listener will provide us with an on success if the call was successful and if that means and has connected. And if that is the case, we're going to want to update the UI to make the end call button visible. We're also going to set this call as the ongoing call and add that on call event listener that we created earlier to that call. Of course, we also have the on error method if we want to handle any error cases in the process of actually making the phone call. OK, and we're ready to launch the application. So we're going to run this up both on the emulator here. And as you can see, it asks us for the audio permission and we're going to log in as Alice. And now that's right ready. And then on my Pixel 4, we've also got the application running. We're going to log in as Bob. We are now connected. So we're going to start the call from my Pixel 4. And as you can see, we get the answer and reject buttons in the emulator. We can answer the call. There we go. We're now connected and we would be having a call. We can then end the call. And as you can see on the Pixel 4, the call has also ended that side. And finally, if we head over to the web server that we had running, you can see that all the event information has been sent through from the Vonage API. So we have all this information that we could then use in our own web server. And that's a wrap. Thank you very much for coming along today with me on this tutorial. I hope you've found it interesting and now have a better understanding of how you can create an app to app voice call using the Vonage. APIs. Of course, this is only the start. Please do make sure you go check out all the other amazing tutorials that we do have and dive into the von developer.vonage.com website where you'll find all the documentation, tools, and tutorials that you could possibly need for your communication APIs. Thank you very much and see you next time.